Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host, Latavia, and I am back for another episode. Today, I am happy to share I have QRC. I'm going to let them introduce themselves individually, but you will learn a bit more about what QRC is, what it stands for, um, and hello and welcome. welcome. Hey. If you want one. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. And today has been it has been a day, but nice. we'll tell you a little bit about that here. But if you all would just introduce yourselves. Okay. okay, I am Rosette, okay. and I'm so glad to be here. All right, I probably should have started with the Q, since it is QRC. <laughs> so she's good. You see, yeah, you see how it's going to be. You guys see. Take two. <laughs> 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 no, I'm so, Q, Q, and Rosette of yes. QRC. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all for being here. As I mentioned, it has been a yeah, day. Been a day. Um, day. Um, and as I shared with you guys before, I like to start with. Uh, just a gratitude moment because um, for me one of the things that I have been doing more so intentionally recently is just making sure that I focus on what is going well um, you know yeah. that whatever is lovely whatever is pure come on, on, come that, on uh, Philippians 4 7 yes, four, four, seven. Seven. Four, seven. Yes. 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 I have my gratitude moment now come on don't, yes. don't, don't okay. steal my so, answer so okay so since you have it because we were I would <laughs> you like, already. Start, like today is just Fast. to give you all a a very quick overview. You can check their stories for their lives um, for a little more detail, but we were set to record and then there was a big sound and the alarms went off and water started flowing mm -hmm. in my apartment and around my complex. So we're delayed, not denied. Come so on, I'm going to let you start Q with awesome. your, what you're grateful all for right. today. So I actually I thought about this, like what I would say, and I, Lord, I'm not trying to sound deep at all, but <laughs> I am literally grateful. Yeah. I am but, and I set it up right. But I am literally grateful for everything mm -hmm. because the Bible says that all things work together for my good. So I literally have to take time out and appreciate everything, everything that doesn't feel good, and then everything, every good moment, I gotta appreciate that. And I, 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 I don't know if she's gonna say the scripture or not, but there's literally a system to gratitude, and I believe you said it was Philippians, like four or five, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it says, um. Don't worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Pray about everything. Mm -hmm. Tell God what you need. And I think then it says, then the peace that surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. will yes. guide your heart and mind. So like that's literally the system. Like don't worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And then the peace is gonna come in. So literally, I take everything and I'm grateful. I don't like everything, but I'm grateful for everything because it all works together. So yeah, that's, that's, good. that's what that's a whole word right there. Come on. <laughs> <Stop. Okay. laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Uh, right, say, right. So I make all for employment. And mm -hmm. so it's it's um not conversely to what what to what's mm -hmm. saying, but kinda like in that thing where it's like where sometimes we're not grateful for our jobs in a season of a lot of people being unemployed and just being able to, you know, guide allow me to have the resource of employment even though it's not always easy, right? And being able to give, right? I can still tithe, I can still give, I can still, mm -hmm. all of our needs mm -hmm. and wants are in the neighbor wants and that. So I'm, I'm just grateful for employment. Yes, I echo both of you all. And I've been saying the last few episodes, I sometimes I feel like a broken record because I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful yeah. for a job, but it's just, like you said, in the midst of everything that has happened this year and we are still in the midst of this pandemic. Yeah. Um, like it's a reminder just of just being grateful for to be alive to wake up and to be employed and for me even further is that i'm able to work from home mm -hmm. although i do i miss co-workers mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. um but just to know that because of everything going on i still have i have the privilege to choose when to leave home or when to interact with people um because i have friends and, and i know people who like you know you have to go back to work or there have been people who've been working this entire time or going out um but above that i guess aside from that <laughs> i'm grateful for renters insurance hey! <laughs> because yes. i am i would say as we are taping this i'm sure there's still water dripping <laughs> into my apartment and before i left my bathroom had started to flood so there was at least there was close up like maybe four inches of water on the floor in my bathroom um living room area so far like it looks like nothing is going to be permanently damaged um but if that is the case 
I'm grateful that I have renter's insurance and shout out to USAA. Come on. They've hold this Same down here. my whole life. Thank you for your service, Dad, and passing that on to me. Um, yes. But yes, and just also I want to say thank you to, to you all, not just for being here, but for your flexibility. <laughs> because as we were, we were literally prepping sound check and everything happened and so went into just i appreciate you all for staying calm with yes. us yes, and in the crisis and thank you even going up to check on my neighbor about apparently she was cooking some fries <laughs> i didn't know but apparently you know, i so we she won't get to enjoy those fries um, I hopefully she had something before they caught on fire and like I guess another thing to know is our sprinkler system works. Oh, it works. It works. Very sensitive. It works. It works. It very it works. sent some smoke and it went off and stayed on. Stayed on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I digress. But yeah. just to get into, like I said, QRC, um, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I did want to have you all on um, mm -hmm. is, and I said Q, I met you through Rosette, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, a lot of our conversations have been around just dating and single and dating and doing it Christ's way yeah. and what that looks like, especially right. nowadays and and in previous episodes or just in conversations with friends about dating and how it just looks so different yeah. now mm -hmm. from when, even when we were younger and, you know, our parents. And so wanted to, to you know, just hear a little bit about you all because I got a, got a glimpse of Q right. back in <laughs> December, <laughs> um, you know, like from a distance, like, right. oh, okay. Exactly. Happened and you know everything shut down. So if you all would just tell tell um share a little bit about you know how how you all met and your experience and I'm sorry if it I had not said it they are dating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to tell nobody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know because you know for those because I am I am still single and I am yeah. open but in just like I said kind of how you all met mm -hmm. um kind of what it looks like for you and and then we'll get into just a little bit more about what are some of the things that you all are doing. Okay. okay. So, um, how we met, we met through mutual friends. Okay. Um, she yeah, yeah, old fashioned. I know, right? right. It's, right. Old it's family, still possible. Right? It's it's absolutely. absolutely. I highly encourage it. It's one of my favorite So, things. I think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, that's our experience. So, so, to get more into it. So, we met through mutual friends. Um, she was close friends with the wife. I was close friends with the husband. And we would go over for barbecues and stuff. They had big gatherings, people over. And that's how we met. And, um... Yeah. So our kids went. Can we say their names? Can we say their names? Uh, no, well, yeah, we met them through. Mm -hmm. That our kids went to school together. Okay. Like the, the couple yeah. mm -hmm. that we met through, and so Memorial Day they love hosting. Yeah. So we they love hosting cookouts. You know, Memorial Day, Labor Day, all those types of things. And so I would, you know, we would see each other, have conversations. She likes to read a lot. Went to just told you. Well, I don't know if you heard it earlier. He loves to read. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about books, and then he's a big Brene Brene mm -hmm. Brown mm -hmm. friend. I was Love like, who? Like I was just getting to know mm -hmm. her, and he quoted one of um, her quotes, and I'm like, I've been using it, using it ever since. Mm -hmm. Clear as kind, I unclear as unkind. unkind, and so um, the very first one was we were parking at the same time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there was glass, it was a whole bunch of broken glass, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize until after I pulled in, and so I quickly pulled out, because I'm thinking, oh, my tire is on, just all deflate, and I'm at four because of the, the glass, and he noticed it. I was like, you was concerned about that glass? And I don't know if y'all had pulled in the space at the same time or what. But. Yeah, we had poured in first, and then it was glass, so we pulled out, and, and went to the same thing. Yeah, we went to the other <laughs> side, and, and, I, then, I, and then see you pulling out, I was like, oh, that. <laughs> then I seen it was his sister, I was like, oh, man, so I, I felt bad, so and I seen you. She know Rose got out. Well, Vanessa, that's that's how I knew back yeah. then. Like Vanessa, I called Vanessa all the time. And so you know, I seen her with glass and everything. So I checked on the tire. I was like, yeah, I think we should be good. And right. so like, you know, you know, same house. We going to the same house. So we wound up going to the same house. And that was the first time we met. Mm -hmm. And just had a good conversation. Everybody was just having a good conversation. Um, that was Friendsgiving. Yeah, it was called oh, okay. Friendsgiving. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then um, the wife, her friend, had a birthday party. Mm -hmm. Seeing seeing Vanessa again. Mm -hmm. And. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't like, I mean, of course, you know, you see Vanessa, she's beautiful, she's pretty, mm -hmm. but that was the first thing on my mind, because I was married at the time. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing on my mind, and actually, her and my ex, I was expecting them to spark up a really, really good friendship over there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so we, you know, we seen each other, lost contact, I don't know if you, you and my ex ever talked or mm -hmm. texted or whatever like that, I don't know. But um, then wound up, me and my ex, we broke up or whatever. 
And um, and now I'm in my with my, my homeboy called my caring state. And he said a caring state is where you just allow everything to set. Mm. And it's, it's, it's a term used for um, construction. So when you set cement, uh-huh. it t- there's a point in time where you just got to let everything set. You can't bother it. Okay. You, can't, you can't touch it. You just got to let it set. And he was like, Quentin, he was like, if you want to move forward, you want to move forward being healthy, you just need to set it. And I come from 14 years being married, 14 years of sex when you want to, all this stuff. I, you know, I was a virgin when I met her. Like, I don't know, I've had 14 years of not setting, just being active. Right. You know, being, you know, being engaged with female contact, being engaged with, you know, constantly going. He was like, this is gonna be the time to kind of like, like redefine like where you are and really let God deal with you and really let him really walk you through this. Mm-hmm. So he was a homeboy of mine that I literally is my accountability partner to this day that I would, if, when I was struggling, I got on the phone with him like, yo, Listen, and, and I, I actually wrote a blog about it, like accountability through divorce. Like, I had to talk about, like, yo, bro, I'm horny. I, just, I don't know how graphic we can get, but it's just, yeah, yeah like, be I, honest. like, like, bro, like, horny, I just want to bust it up. Like, that's, 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 that's all, that's all I want to do. I just, yeah. just want to bust it up. You know, I don't need, I don't need a relationship or nothing like that. And he's like, bro, like, you're kidding me, bro. Like, he get it, he got it. Uh-huh. And he was like, bro, I just want female contact right now. Right. And he was like, bro, like, I get it, but we're kidding. He's like, Oh, I just want to go on a date. Like, I, like, I ain't even hot and bothered right now. I just want the company of a female. Right. Like, bro, right now you just really need to set and care. And so he literally walked me through that season or whatever. And so when we came on the other side of that, you know, probably a couple months later, maybe three months later, now I'm thinking, like, I'm like, I'm having a picture. Yeah, I'm right, kidding. Like, I feel good, like, you know, I, 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 I'm, 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 right, right, yeah. Well, you think it's right. And, and a lot of, and sometimes men don't realize how precious we are. Like, mm-hmm. I know women are put on a pedestal, but guys, we have to realize that we're precious too. Like, what we offer is precious at the same time. And you gotta, like, love on yourself. So it's like, I know, I'm a, I'm a whole commodity out here. I got a good paying job, you know, I, um, I love God. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I got all these things for me. And I have my, my boys whispering that into my ear too. Like, bro, like, Listen, you're not gonna be single long if you don't want to. But it's like when you go back and tour, you gotta go back and tour it healthy. You know, you don't want to go bring any baggage or anything like that. So kind of speed it up. When you're like carrying and I'm, you know, these lonely nights and I'm not going out Friday night, you got nothing but thinking. So I'm like, man, think about the future. And I was talking to my boy. I said, bro, I said, is that single? <laughs> And he's Same like, person, Rosette. Yeah, 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 right, right. Yeah, and okay. and I'll transition to Rosette, but the, at the time, that was she was good. Yeah. That's what I'm like, bro, is that something you like? Oh, that's a good question. He said, bro, he said, I don't know. He said, I can find out. He said, but still, he said, yeah, you're in your curious. He said, you're in your curious. Even if she is. Yeah. Right. And he's like, and technically, you're still married. So he was like, so you can't be dating nobody or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, technically, you're still married. I said, I hear that, but I'm thinking about the future. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about the future. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking about editing game or whatever like that. And so, surely, you know, he got next to me like, bro, I, I think she's, I think she's, you know, single or whatever. And so, literally, at that moment, Vanessa became like, to me, like the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, like, it's like, you know, I, I mean, it's, it sounds crazy, but like, if I'm going to do this work, I'm going to do this work with the possibility that I can invest the time that I put in her. And so it's like, you know, I'm going to do this work. And so I did the work. Like, I did the work being by myself, calling my boy, like, bro, let me go red. Like, yo, pray for me, man. But uh, at, the light of, at, at the end of the tunnel, and then once I got, you know, the separation, then he started getting his wife to put in a little, you know, <laughs> little, little, for me. So I guess I'll turn it over to you. Oh, so, so, yeah. So, <laughs> Memorial Day. Memorial Day, they had another cookout. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, that was 2019. Yep, 2019 Mm -hmm. Memorial Day. And, um, yep, so uh, I came to the cookout, me and my son. And I'm like, like it was just like any other event. I didn't know. I had, I had no idea right. that he was interested. I was just going talking. Yeah, no, going to, like, 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 you know, I did not know. And so we just, you know, we talking like we continue to talk. At this point, he was sharing a little bit 
about how he was um, working on his relationship with his daughter mm -hmm. because that was hard for her the separation and you know leaving um, all that so I'm like giving you know telling him you know you need to ask her how you can be a better, better father I'm in mean, like quote unquote like counseling mode friendship counseling mode you need to ask her how you can be a better father you need to schedule time for you to talk you need to randomly text her and so he's looking at his phone while I'm talking to him and I'm like are you listening yeah. <laughs> he's like I'm actually taking notes I'm like oh, oh excuse that's impressive <laughs> like, I didn't say that but I'm like so far and he's like, like reading a little bit of what we talked about I'm like wow that's pretty cool now there's a bunch of people there so and my son is there so i'm like walking around me you know going to different areas so just talking to different people random people but yeah that was like i was like okay i enjoyed the conversation just like i enjoyed talking to the friend that was the host and the husband of, of my friend that was the host just talking to random people but later on she uh, we went to lunch my friend and i and she's like interested in you or whatever i'm like is it like i had no idea and so fast forward she was like real quick because the whole time we talking when we said talk i thought he was vibing <laughs> yeah, yeah my mind yeah, like, to say, like, 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 oh like she really made me interested i mean oh, really and from the father <laughs> and out, she was she was just having having to have a conversation now i'm just like oh. Okay. Yeah, it's it's nice. Nice. Right. Nice. 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 I was enjoying it. I, I live with a six year old. You know, so yeah. I'm just having a little conversation. I'll talk yeah. to kids as a career. Right. At home. Exactly. We're just talking. Mm -hmm. So later on, so fast forward, like you said, he was in the separation stage. Mm -hmm. So the um, divorce was final later on at the fall of the year, I think in November. Mm -hmm. And so then we had. Uh, a, like we went on a double date, just right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a double date with a couple yeah. that we met through um, mm -hmm. in November, and that was when we he asked me for my number. He's like, "It's okay, I have your number." And we, you know, you know, that's when we talk. We talk with the couple. Mm -hmm. They left, and then we had about an hour. I think yeah. of us talking at a restaurant, just mm -hmm. the two of us, and you know, getting to know each other. And he asked. I don't think it was that first day, but maybe one or two days later, as, after us exchanging numbers and talking on the phone with Marco Polo, he was like, "Did you real, did you realize I was liking you and man?" I'm like. No. <laughs> <laughs> he no. was like, you wasn't feeling I was just like yeah, sorry, no. He was like we need some realty when I found out. Actually it was another guy that that just <laughs> <laughs> I really was. I was, I was like, like I was like, you were there. Right. But I enjoyed the conversation. I wasn't really thinking And so he just like, well, that was God. He was like, why did that? Because if you, if I didn't know you weren't interested, I wouldn't have asked you. Yeah, absolutely. He's like, I would, I would have been heartbroken. <laughs> He's like, that was. I'll be over here. Like, oh, oh, I've been staying in. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. it was, yeah. So it was fun. So it was been, yeah. yeah. First date in November, and then you know, hanging out. Yeah. Ever since, just um, getting to know each other, dating. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then right. Um, I know, right? That tricky word. That yeah, tricky right. word. That tricky yeah. word. And we got yeah. we're God yeah. is really, really good about like and, and I'm, this is not a line. I've, I've told Rosette and I'm gonna call it Rosette now. More. <laughs> like I literally was attracted to her mind first. Like I literally, and Lord knows I'm not lying, I did not realize that she had a bigger or a shape until like probably like out oh, like fifth date mm. or something like that. That's when I really said, oh, oh she got shape. <laughs> like <laughs> Like, Lord, you are really good. Like, but I was really, I was attracted to her mind. I was attracted to her servitude, like the way she loved God. She did this off serve day at, um, at a church. And like that to me was impressive, like for her to really dive in and to facilitate and do stuff like that. So I really was attracted to her mind. So it was very easy. Can we say dating is like gathering data? It was very easy for me to gather data about essential stuff more than just really focus on her body or whatever. And I'm literally telling you, nothing about God. Because I'm a man, you know, I, men most of the time be attracted with our eyes or whatever, but she really, she captured my, my intellect. Like my, I always say I'm a sapiosexual or whatever, so she really caught me on that, you know, so, so yeah, so. Yeah, because when we met, when, not met, when we saw each other at the Memorial Day cookout, I was kind of like a walking, I'm not gonna say ad, but I was talking about, oh, uh, sorry, days, no, sorry, sorry, days you, up. you were like one of the main organizers mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. So okay. yeah, I was on, you know, leadership team. And so we were, I'm like, oh, sign up, here's an app, like do all this. And of course people would say, oh, I'm gonna come. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll be there. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna sign up for this. So, and, and he did that too, in terms of saying he was gonna sign up. Right. Yeah. But then when I saw our friend at the daycare where our kids went, I'm like, oh, what happened to you? Cause he wasn't able to come due to a conflict in his schedule that was legitimate. But he was like, but you went? I'm like, you went? 
and I had no idea. Yeah. And, and I had like shift like from twelve at night to like three in the morning. Yeah, because like the ones where they went out in the you know. So she wasn't seeing me. I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, so exactly. That's not my Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So just to kind of highlight when you we one of the things you talked about in all the episodes was group dating and different oh, yeah, different yeah, dynamics yes. what different dates look like online dating group dating all those um and so it was a situation where that was attractive in terms of that he went like it was like i looked at getting to know him as not group dating but going to different, different cookouts seeing yeah. friends i had already knew a little bit about him right and when he was a man at his work because the, you know friend confirmed that he did go i'm like oh wow he really he didn't just you know what's part of his lips are oh, just oh yeah. I'm like, oh, he really showed up. So that's there was a follow through. Yeah, right. Follow which I yeah. Come on now. feel like is thank you. Yeah. It's not right. lost. No, I know right, that it's right, 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 right. right. That's right. Me. But um but no, that's great. And as you guys were talking, and I I didn't say this before, I met Rosette through um attending I five when we were in a group together. Mm -hmm. And I think I talked about that on a previous episode of just kind of how as adults living different moving i've moved a lot so developing friends meeting people is a bit challenging and so that was one of the ways mm -hmm. um that i met you and then now yeah, yeah. um but as you guys were talking i'm like the timeline timeline yes. so i'm like oh wow so when i saw you all that was in december i think that was for i am christmas yes. um so that was it was still like real like, reason yeah, right. okay. yeah. So, yeah. Um, i was on a lamp breaking the yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. i want to come serve that with me, like, like you did art yeah, yeah. You right. did. Like, you can come, but you do this. You do this <laughs> over here. <laughs> but with I am Christmas, it's kind of difficult. Right. Because you do a different shift. Right. Yeah. Um, with I am Christmas, we're there. So there's what people at the church sorting mm -hmm. um, and kind of handing out bags of toys that have been pre-sorted, and then you have others who are driving. Right. Um, they come to come to the church, pick up a bag, and then they're given addresses and they deliver them right. to people throughout the state. Yeah. So if somebody's coming to serve with you, they're serving with, with you. There is no right. And that gave me all the way away. Ain't you ain't pulling that, no, you serve. Right. Yeah, you yeah. Serve. So because I remember yeah. when you walked in, I was like, we had. I think we hadn't talked in a little mm -hmm. while. It was like, hey, how you doing? And then there was somebody else who was with me. I was like, we. I wish I had. Yeah, 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 yeah,
uh, I don't remember exactly when and where it was, but let's say a month or two in. Mm -hmm. He was like, so, you know, what is this? I'm like, we're dating. Yeah. And if somebody else asked me on a date, yeah. I'm going to go on a date. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm not like, yeah. Right. Like, I'm available yeah. to date. I'm dating you, and I believe in God. Yeah. I believe in dating yeah. it's it. Until it's yeah. Until something we else. we have had a conversation. <laughs> exactly. so this is, did I date you, you date me, and we're going to date you. Then I am open and available. Okay. We had very intentional conversation from jump. And I'll be honest with you. I think that's that's Rosette. She is a very straight to the point type person, and um, and so I I can definitely and I gotta be honest. She probably took the take, took the lead on just how intentional we were, like through dialogue. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm very I'm I'm free to I, you know I'm, I'm very straightforward too. But I didn't take the lead on it, and so I was kind of like piggybacking off of her. And I'm like, oh, we like talk talk like sorry sorry stuff. I'm you know I'm about like right. I'm about being intentional. Like, okay. Oh, okay. So, so I'm looking up definitions. So let's, <laughs> and we made it intentional. Right. And so we really we settled on that we are friends gathering data. Like that's what we settled on. Like we're friends gathering data. And like she made it very clear. Like you know I can see other people. Or I mean I don't want to tell like the way you worded it differently. Mm -hmm. But like if I'm gonna go and gather data with somebody else, I'll gather data with somebody else. Me, me personally, I'm not the type of person. I, my mother always said I have a um, one track mind. Like I zero in. Like I just, I ain't nobody else. I, I'm just zeroing in with you. If this don't work, okay, I'll cure it for a little bit longer, and then I'll see if it's somebody else. Right now, I ain't even nobody else. I'm interested in that, right. you know. Because I, like I said, I'm, I'm a savior. Like you gotta attract my mind before anything or whatever. And so um, we was very intentional that we are friends gathering data, and so. That was good because you know when you're dating, you 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 know well, I'm, maybe I don't know females but other guys you know I'm like oh, you know can I hug her you know can I hold her hand when you do the first kiss like you like you think like stuff like that but when you look up what the actual definition of friends is friend is 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 people who are devoid probably is not the word but it's no romantic stuff involved like friendship is no sexual stuff involved. Mm -hmm. Friendship is like literally that friendship. It's like it's like the common bond without like the sexual part or whatever. Gotcha. I can't. I'm like sum, summarizing gotcha. that. And so, because we were intentionally defining ourselves as friends gathering data, I had to remind myself like we ain't even thinking about stuff like that. Like we ain't thinking about kissing. We ain't thinking about holding hands because we're friends gathering data. These are the boundaries that we agreed upon and this is where we gonna stay at or whatever. And for me it was always going back like if tensions, if sexual tensions came up, if that romantic because I mean you are attracted to each other. So you're gonna be romantic but it's like in order to be intentional and build that boundary, we are friends gathering data. So mm -hmm. the, the, the the conversation was very intentional mm -hmm. starting off. And I think that that helped a lot. Like because right. I was like, I'm single. single. Yep. I'm dating. And I'm available. Yep. <laughs> but you have my attention. Right. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, said, yeah, 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 I'm available. Oh, but you have my attention. What's time to say we literally went to I don't know what to call it, but it was somebody was offering their service like to help females with dating. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so I'm the yeah, only we guy like an interest uh, meeting, yeah. Yeah, interest meeting. Yeah, right. yeah. Only guy that and me was that we walking together it's instantly. You know, you're the only guy there, so the women are like, yeah, right. oh, they, they, they look like, I'm smiling. What, you, what, even if I ain't cute, I'm the only one there, so I'm cute that day. Right. <laughs> right. Everybody, everybody, everybody looking, but trying not to look like, 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 I said I'm dating, but I'm unavailable because I'm zero in. Right. This chick yep. here, she, she came the wrong way. She went around the table like that. <laughs> oh no, she, she said, said, "Oh, I'm dating and unavailable." I'm like, I was like, like "What's going on?" I'm like, "I hit one." But we had a conversation, so I, was, I knew what she was going to say. Right, but right. it's just like, that's why everybody looking at me like, "What is going on?" Right, like, right, he's right. not available. You not there. I don't know what's going on. Do they know? It was some Jedi mind trying to figure it out. But it was like attention but I'll be honest like okay if you want to go date cool but I'm not interested in nobody else so go do what you gotta do but I'll be here because like I just want to get to know you so yeah, no. yeah. and you guys said it boundaries 
boundaries, I would say, is almost like a four-letter word. Mm -hmm. um, and so you talked about your curing phase and kind of some of the things, but Rosette, for you, mm -hmm. prior to finding out that he was interested, I guess, what were some of the things that you had decided to do or were doing in terms of establishing what your boundaries would be mm -hmm. um, in dating? And I guess if you were dating before you all started or, or what that looked like for you? I know. It, it didn't. It looked like, so I'm also divorced, so um, I was divorced when we met, like a year and a half. I had already been divorced, so the separate, you know, the length of time yeah. it takes between separation and an actual divorce being final, you go through a lot. And as a Christian, I did what I, what I called a lot of prayer and purging. Mm -hmm. And so there were times where, when my son was with, you know, his dad and I'm like at the house praying, crying, like, Lord, this heartache, this, this pain, I don't know what to do with it. So I have to surrender it to you. And that's where I was. And then our church, I will never forget, um, I, my divorce date, court date hadn't even come yet. Okay. And um, Pastor Jimmy preached a sermon called, I Gotta Get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, I don't know where where <laughs> God had him go. Right. He had this sermon, the woman with the issue of blood, and then he all of a sudden called us. He was like, it was like a, a father demanding me to do something. Mm -hmm. Like, I need everyone who is going through or recently divorced to come here now. Like it was like okay, like literally, I felt I had to go. Like I had, I'm at like, first, I'm like, well, I'm not divorced because it was worth it. Mm -hmm. But he prayed for us, and it was like I went back. I I caught my healing. Like mm -hmm. I caught my healing. I was whole. Like I. Could, my sister came, my divorce court date was a month from that, after that. And my sister's like, what's wrong with you? Are you about to crack up crazy because you're not crying? You're not like, mm -hmm. you know, what, I, what I've seen in whatever girl's right. trip or whatever. Right. The movie's yeah. like, hey. I was just like, okay, because I had already, I, I had been praying on my own, I had been purging. And um, and then, you know, having sealed the deal, so to speak, I would right. say, in that. And so, it's still a process, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Like every day, but... Um, I will say that was a, a defining moment for me. And after that, I wasn't looking at it. I was literally looking to be a single mom. Like I was just doing what, doing life, going, visiting friends before COVID, right? Like you can go to cookout school, go places. <laughs> right. Come on down. And, um, and, and, and raise, right, and raise my child. That was it. I literally, that's where I was. And so if it was going to be a welcome, just, um, interruption, that's where I was in it. When I, if and when I met somebody, someone, I was going to give myself time to, oh, am I going to date? Am I going to go online? I was mm -hmm. considering that. I had eased into it as far as dating. I had started doing, oh gosh, not Eventbrite, meetup, meetup.org, meet yeah. and like going to social functions right. with other Christian singles and other singles and things like that. But as far as dating someone exclusively or getting, being interested in giving someone my attention, I hadn't gone, I hadn't gotten to that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. so yeah, I guess one of the things that I think I find interesting and appreciate is that for you all, both of you from your you know respective journeys or experiences that whole phrase you did the work or right? yeah. you were doing and i had done the work in terms Absolutely. of addressing your trauma your Absolutely. you know your feelings are real like both of you have relationships ended and so mm -hmm. that's no that's no small thing mm -hmm. um and then also figuring out how, what life was going to look like for you yeah. individually and for your children mm -hmm. as you're moving forward mm -hmm. and i think that's something that in in I guess when we did the previous episode about dating is that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't take the time to do mm. to figure out, okay, one, who am I? Mm -hmm. For those who are Christians, whose am I? Mm -hmm. And like, what does that relationship look like? And what are, what are my traumas or what are the things, what is my baggage? Um, because one of the things that I'm learning to accept is that some things it's not necessarily ever going to go away, mm -hmm. but learning mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. deal with it mm -hmm. and it, I guess now I'm getting deep, but no, I thought really. about the whole, you know, the thorn Paul and the thorn in my side. Right. Like, the Lord take us away from me, mm -hmm. but he, like, I've tried, I've asked and asked, and he mm -hmm. won't take it, but now it's going to be, it's mm -hmm. there, it's my reminder that yes. when I'm weak, God, you're strong. Mm -hmm. And I would say, especially this year, I've gotten a greater appreciation for mm -hmm. that. And so I am grateful to hear that you all are doing that, or did that, mm -hmm. and are doing that in your, um, your dating relationship that I believe is now exclusive. Yes. <laughs> um, I didn't get to that part yet. All yeah. right. I'm like, no, I'm not <laughs> I do want to piggyback on one thing you said mm -hmm. about just also doing the work. I didn't mention this, but um, so when I initially separated, like leaving out of the home where I was with uh, my previous marriage, I was in a counseling apartment before I had an apartment on my own. Okay. So I say that to say I did 26 months of continued counseling. Mm. So initially once a week, then scaled back to once every two weeks mm -hmm. for 26 months. So I was trying to calculate how many actual sessions I did, but I went to lengthy Christian counseling because of that, you know, mm -hmm. relationship 
transitioning. And right. So that was another part of the work that I was doing as well. I just wanted to yes, um, mention that. No, I, I support counseling and therapy, and you know I do. We have yeah. also a counselor. Yes. Um, yes. You know, more, more on that. Yes. Which I sure. yeah. um, but no, yes. I, I think that's a big part mm -hmm. of it, and I'm a big proponent of it. Um, but just, I'm trying to think of how to broach it. So I know that for you and I, some of our conversations mm -hmm. about dating, and even in some of the previous episodes of Christian dating, or is there a difference between Christians dating and regular, you know, everybody mm -hmm. else dating, or should there be a difference? Mm -hmm. And for me, one of the biggest difference is when I hear people say, "Are you doing it the Christ, you know, Christ way or the right way?" Mm -hmm. Is are you being, you know, what is are you being pure and mm -hmm. what is purity? Or are you abstaining? Mm -hmm. Are you being celibate? And then like what that looks like. So mm -hmm. if you all could just talk a little bit about your views on that or your in your experiences mm -hmm. with that, right? <laughs> oh, she so did. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, she did. <laughs> yes. right. So we'll, I will say, just mention that we did become exclusive. Like he, he asked me to be his girl. Like, <laughs> he, he, like, asked, he, he, like, like, he asked. He asked. You know, that was an actual question. question. There was. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, what does it mean to have a girlfriend? Yeah, that part. And I'm like, friend, friend. I don't know what you are. I don't know what I want to say. So I say friend, friend, or significant other. Yes. Like I say that all the time. Or my guy. That's my other thing. I'm like my guy. Or my significant other, or friend, friend, and people are like, oh, friend, friend, friend. they hear that, they're like, oh, not just a friend, my friend, friend, my friend, my friend, friend. So you got a friend, a friend, right. Yeah, right? So my friend, friend, um, it's not without the struggles. I'll let you take it away. Right? <laughs> <laughs> talking about the struggles. The, like, so, but I'm a, I'm a right, right. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk. Right, right, right. So I'm gonna talk biblical truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna talk experience. Okay. Right. Biblical truth. Um. Sex is made for marriage. Mm -hmm. Point blank period. Um, and I think if you dig deep, I even, oh, I'll say dig deep. If you really, if you really look at it, you'll see the benefits of waiting while waiting to have sex until you're married. Mm -hmm. There's great benefits. When um I waited until I was married to have sex with my wife, my ex-wife. Um and it's funny because there, there definitely there definitely was benefits. Um, but let's be real, there, there's also the enemy wants to play on the unknown as well. Mm -hmm. And um, not to put John Gray out there, but I can. I can this is about us. But I'm going to be honest, I can, I can sympathize with John Gray and I can sympathize with other guys who I know who waited. Um, the enemy fights you so hard. Like when you wait and you do it the right way, he want to come and say, well, what's missing? Mm -hmm. What you didn't do. He's gonna fight you hard. I mean, he wanted to he want to tarnish your name. He wanted to tarnish your testimony. And so um, you get forged so hard. I mean, and, and the world society is made up for us to be um, exposed, sex sexualized at a, at a at a very young age. Everything is just sexualized at a very yes. young age. So to stay on topic, sex is made for marriage, and I believe that if we look, if we dig deep, we'll see the benefits of that. Um, not not having nothing to compare to. Is a big thing, um, mm -hmm. you know, when your your wife or your significant other, your wife, or your spouse can control your orgasm. That's a big thing. If they can give you one you never had one, that's a big thing. They give you something that you never had before. I mean, who's not going to cling to that? Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, so there are so many big proponents to doing it the biblical way, which is sex, which is within the contents of marriage. Now, then you talk about purity. So that's just sex. Then you talk about purity. Abstaining from masturbation, abstaining from um, oral sex, um, abstaining from um, clitoral stimulation, and all these okay. different things like that, right? Um, which is a, such a hot topic in the Bible because, I mean, in the church, because you can't nobody get a straight answer on it. Because there, there, exactly. <laughs> there isn't one. Exactly. And scientifically, <laughs> what? Yeah. I didn't look. Come okay. on, come on, man. Did, okay, this, I was just like, this is a side note. I don't know if you guys follow Kev on stage, but he did an interview with uh, I think Candace Bimbo or Bimbo, and she and she, she really had she me thinking some things because I was already kind of questioning some stuff. So I'm like, come on, okay, she broke it down in a she way that I was just it. like, oh, she, she was <laughs> especially that thing about Ruth. Yeah, I was like, that man, oh, she laid at his feet. Oh, so I was good. I was good. Yeah. So. Huh? 
Right. Okay. So if you Come have on. it, I would definitely recommend you go. Yeah. Was, uh, there was an interview with uh, Kev on stage, and I think it's Candace Ben Bow. Ben Bow. Ben Bow. Um, but yeah, it's it's long, it's, but it's worth it's it. Worth it. it. She goes through a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But you said like saying that. So in yeah. terms of like you said, people in the church. There's yeah. for one. I know in my experience, growing, yeah. I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. It's always just don't do it. Right. There's no why. There's exactly. no how. There's no. There's not a lot of conversation exactly. around the practical. Mm -hmm. exactly. And so, like you said, it's it's all these things out there, exactly. and they'll throw a scripture or two at you exactly. about don't fornicate yeah. or in, uh, what is it? Um, yeah, immor right. immor immor sexual, sexual immorality, immorality, sexual immorality which is interesting. Is Right. 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 And then what did that word mean? And the writer, when he wrote when yeah. he wrote that, what was he talking about? And in every translation it says yeah. something, something different. different. Exactly. Well, yeah, so, uh, exactly. so, so again, I'm going, you know, I am being a preacher, I'm very cognizant about giving biblical truth. Mm -hmm. And I think um anytime that you can have self-control over yourself is a plus. Yes. Anytime you can have self-control over yourself and stuff, anything, anything you do impulsively. You're really not in control, you know, and so, and I think above all things, the biblical teaching it teaches us to, like it's a um, a city without walls. I can't remember how it goes, but pr pretty much like if you don't have boundaries, right, right, exactly, right. 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 And so, error on the side of caution, biblical truth, sexual purity. I believe God will honor that, and I believe that's the way to go, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Now, let's talk about experience. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to try to um, circumvent the Bible. I'm not going to try to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, <laughs> yeah. um, I minimize, not, not minimize, but like um, contradict. Contradict, I mean, yeah, yeah. contradict like, but I will, I will say this. It's important to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, it's so because as much as people preach at you what's right or wrong, the Bible says in um, it's John 16, I believe it's verse 7. It says, Christ said, it's better that I go away because if I go away, I'm going to send you the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it says, he's going to prove to you how wrong you have been about sin, judgment, and say some other thing or whatever. And what I've come to find out is that no matter how much people preach to you about what you should do, is up the Holy Spirit to literally take your hand and guide you yes, on yes. what you should go to. And he will show you biblical truth. He will speak things to you that's not necessarily in the Bible that will keep you disciplined and keep you right where you need to be. And so for me, my experience has been really to lean in on the Holy Spirit. That's how he brought me to a friend, as in my boy, that would teach me how to care. Because if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit using him, I probably would be out here wilding. And you can tell me all the biblical truth you want, right. but it was literally him using him as a companion, as a brother to me, to keep me in line. One of her love languages is acts of services. Like, I never would have been pushed and led to go to Ark Survey and to serve her in a way that speaks her love language if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, that experience, when I say experience, it says in Acts, after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power to be the witness of Jesus Christ. That experience is such a big piece that I think a lot of people leave out. They just want to beat you over the head with the word. But literally, you you can't preach nobody into purity. Not at all. Not at all. It's literally going to take the you Holy can, Spirit. You can fear them into the exactly <laughs> right. And even and even right. that'll work. And I want to touch on this for a little while. And I, yes, and I just and I want to touch on this. And I don't know if we're gonna get off of it or not. But when I talk about being over sexualized at a young age, a lot of people have these sexual urges because a lot of them, some of them would touch and molest them when they were younger. Yeah. And some of right. yeah, and some of it, some of it is blocked out, and some of them, they don't know why they had these urges, but they was introduced to something at a young age. And I'm learning but, right. with, with a lot of men. A lot of men have been touched by women at a young age. Yes. One six dot org. It literally says that um, one in six men have been sexually abused or sexually assaulted at a young age, and that's just not by men. I it's literally okay. polled eight men. And five out of eight have been molested by a woman at a minor age. So a lot of these men, and a lot of people, I'm not going to say men, I'm saying men because that's what I'm focused on, but a lot of people had these urges, and they don't know how, but they've been introduced to something young. So how do you deal with that? Like right. when you literally had trauma that you don't even understand, 
because that you done blocked out. And then it's also been specifically for men. It's been said it's like, oh no, you're the man because you did something. It has been celebrated, exactly. so you don't even recognize. Oh, it. Oftentimes, that it, it, I've seen or heard is like men don't acknowledge that or see it as trauma. Exactly. So it's not something I need that's to deal right. with exactly. because it was. That's the norm. Exactly. Right. That's exactly. what you're supposed to be. Yeah. Twelve, yeah. Right. sixteen, right. and eighteen. Right. 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 Like so the. The, the pull it full circle when it comes to bring it home to, to me and her, <laughs> when it comes to sexual purity and sex and everything. I thank God that we have an accountability team in place. We have um, boundaries in place mm -hmm. um, that make it, I don't even know if I want to say easier. It makes it possible. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, easier. Makes it possible. It, it takes her to check me at times. Mm -hmm. And me, well, no, I checked me at the time. <laughs> like, like, I ain't going to check me, 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 yeah, so, so you, well, well, we not, well, we ain't like, going to do Let me get off this phone. Yeah, yes. well, we ain't going to do And yes. so, again, that's why I say, you know, about the Holy Spirit and really that when it comes to it, you know, experiencing the Holy Spirit for yourself. And so, um, yeah, we have an accountability team in place. We have boundaries in place. We read um, Christian dating apps together, Christian plans. Mm -hmm. play, um, Christian plans, right, right, right. We, right. Read, we read every morning. Right? So, yeah, pray speaking morning. of the artists, yeah, pray. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't get this approved before we <laughs> Just being real, like we we're not gonna say, oh we're like he said Pastor Ray Shea, right? Pastor he so eloquently, that's one of my nicknames for him, EQ, eloquently stated, we're not out here promoting premarital sex. We're not, but we're not gonna fake like we waited. Like we've fallen, right? Mm -hmm. But we are recommitted. Yep. I can't really a couple Made sure of it. Stay calling my phone. Like, <laughs> I'm um, around it, like, yeah, I was like, no, so, I yeah. so, so yeah. But we are recommitted to like that's yeah. not where we're gonna stay. Right. Just like Finn, right? You're not staying there. Like I'm not gonna lean on. Oh, I could just you know re go right. ahead. No, I'm not living that type of life because I have been abstinent before, and I could easily mm -hmm. do it again. When when I had my you know first experience, mm -hmm. after that you know I was in a season of abstinence for eight years, mm -hmm. and when I was married. That was my first time having sex with my husband, as I call him. My ex husband was on our wedding night. So it's not like I haven't. That was after being exposed to it, you know, early, you know, whatever. And so then I recommitted for eight years and a half. So I, I know I can do it. And I'm committed to doing doing that again. It's mm -hmm. just that this was different where we were like, let's, let us pray. And that's where our accountability couple has been holding our hand. Right. I know you talked about that on a previous episode. So I don't know how good it feels about oh, sharing that. Is that yeah. what I'm okay. And I didn't. And so that's one thing is like, I. One of the things I said in, in doing this is I want to be as transparent as mm -hmm. possible, but also be respectful of, of mine and other people's privacy. Right. Um, but that's one thing that I'm, I'm curious, or I've always been curious, especially when I see people in church or just other mm -hmm. Christians that are dating. It's because it's one thing, like you said, if I'm single and I'm saying I'm being celibate, I'm mm -hmm. in accident, yeah. it's just me. I'm, right. I'm choosing that. It's yeah. a lot easier to, for me, I would say it's easier to remove myself from mm -hmm. a situation or yeah. a limit mm -hmm. but then when you actually decide to enter into a relationship mm -hmm. and, and I think and I can say this based on my experience it, it does take both people uh, being, yeah, so being committed to that yeah. like and it needs to be something that if not both coming in with that thought process right. at least before getting there that there is a mutual understanding and not just a one-sided right. I feel like in my experiences it's more so been this is what I'm doing right. and if you're going if we are going to be in a relationship yeah. this is what it needs to be but that always puts some type of a strain on mm -hmm. it because that wasn't what he really he was doing it trying to be respectful right. or maybe he was he did want to try or right. thought he could mm -hmm. whatever the purpose but yeah. it, it always became yeah some type of strain mm -hmm. but i appreciate you all being willing to share like hey i'm still human mm -hmm. and things happen and i think that's the part that when you're talking about people will try to preach purity to you mm -hmm. that i think the church or society mm -hmm. as a whole is a lot of do as i say not that that's I do, right. or you don't do this but or if it was all of the you know if you do this then this is going to mm -hmm. happen all the evil stuff right. happens and then because we're humans, we want to know is the stove really hot? <laughs> right. um, mm -hmm. That it happens, mm -hmm. and you do it, and then the because I and we were talking about Brene Brown earlier for me, like that's where the, sh the shame comes yeah. in because it's yes. when I messed up, yes. mm -hmm. I did it, but I wasn't supposed Absolutely. to. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
But I kind of want to do it again. Yeah. So wait, am I now a bad person? Right. And then for me, I know it was, I didn't really know who to go to, who to yeah. have those conversations with, or, and I did initially didn't know about Brene Brown, but mm -hmm. I feel like these are the conversations mm -hmm. um, that I wish I had more of growing mm -hmm. up. And I'm happy to have now because for me, I know growing up, it was, you don't have sex till you get married. You mm -hmm. wait, went through all mm -hmm. that stuff, even did this thing called King's Daughters. We got our purity rings right. and mm -hmm. said all this stuff. Right, right, and, right. and I did it until, I think I, I was in law school. And then mm -hmm. it was just like, oh wait, for me, it was, like you said, the curiosity of mm -hmm. what am I missing? Mm -hmm. But then it happening and then it's like, okay, what yeah, now? Yeah, right. But initially it was more you getting the shame of oh mm -hmm. dang because for me it was dang I'm, a lot of my people were I'm, I'm kind of disappointed because yeah. I was proud that you yeah. were right like, oh, but you was yeah. climbing and you was giving me a hard time oh, the whole right. time exactly. so but like you said it happens and and I would say great I'm grateful for grace and mm -hmm. then you're talking about the relationship with the Holy Spirit because yes. it's that's if right. you were, and I think Pastor Jimmy talked about this once with that red balloon about yes. the um, what was it? What was those movies called? The rap movie with the rapture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when left, behind. Behind. left behind. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Left behind. Left behind. Because like yeah. that to me, that was the whole thing of if you do this, then this is gonna right. happen, right. and then it's just every the rapture gonna come, and you gonna be yeah. sent left here right. waiting. Mm -hmm. But it's like all of that stuff, like the fear wears off, yeah. right? And. I I'm I'm like okay. I need you to give me more something to hold on yeah. to because this fear kept me from doing it yeah, for so right. long. But now okay, right. I'm not afraid anymore. Okay, look, I done touched it. I got burned. It hurt a little bit, and now I'm, I keep it moving. And so it's like I said, it's it's good to hear that. Mm -hmm. And I guess knowing the things that you all do and the experiences that you've had, and you've mentioned the accountability partners. Mm -hmm. um, I guess. How does that work or what does that mm -hmm. look like if someone was to say, um, okay, I'm not dating, but I want to have one. I'm maybe mm -hmm. going, I need to put myself in a curing yeah. phase right, right, right. or I have now met someone and we're deciding to to date. Like, how would you, I guess, how was that conversation broached or mm -hmm. how do you all, what does that dynamic look like? Right. Accountability partners? Mm -hmm. um, so it's funny because the accountability partner we have uh, the the wife was just partners as a husband and wife duo. The wife was just my spiritual and professional um, accountability partner or mentor. Mentor. Gotcha. She was my professional and spiritual mentor because her career is similar to okay. mine and her age is a little, you know, similar to mine. So all of that. And I'm like, but then when I started thinking about her personal life, mm -hmm. it was similar to mine. She's remarried. Okay. They're blended. Mm -hmm. She has a. Husband and a daughter. I, don't, I haven't got to that part yet, but hopefully, one day, our husband and daughter. Like, I'm like, okay, she might need to like. Right. Okay, let's add, let's add this component to mm -hmm. it. Like, I asked her with, when we started dating, like, hey, would you be? And she was like, ah, like excited. <laughs> and so that's how it went. Like, she was, she's very, she was like that in your business, in your face when it was just professional and spiritual. Like, you read your word because you sound a little low on the phone. And I'm like. <laughs> What you been doing? Right, right, right. And like, you know, if I was sad or overwhelmed as being a single mom, which was something that was a, a change for me. And so then when we were dating, she, you know, I asked her if her and her husband would okay. be interested. And it went, it went to, she had to ask her husband. They had to meet, he had to meet him. Mm -hmm. We did a, um, a Zoom call initially because this transpired during this, you know, COVID season and did a couple. And so he was eyeing. <laughs> so like, mm -hmm. I mean, it was like recognizance, mm -hmm. military survey. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, he looking at me. Like, he looking at you. Like, mm -hmm. You might not even move wrong, <laughs> breathe wrong, but it was it was good. So we we did those, and so now we just we meet via Zoom. I call her, he calls mm -hmm. husband. We do Zoom calls um, sometimes twice a month, yeah. okay. sometimes once a month. We are they actually live out of town, so we okay. are gonna have to go meet them somewhere, you know, in between because it's out, not out of town, out of state. Yeah. And, um, and do that. Okay. Yeah, Let me go. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. Okay. Like, everything she said is definitely on, but yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes four nine it says two are uh, sorry. Okay. That's sorry. Church, it says two are better than one because in one fall the other person is there to help them out. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that just points to just how good it is to have a system in place that can help you if you fall. And so that's that's why I believe in. Accountability. I think life is not meant to be, you know, done done alone. Mm -hmm. But even when you look at the Trinity, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. like it's they're different functions, but they all 
they use each other to hold each other accountable. Right. Like Jesus says, you know, what I do is, is because of the Father. The, um, Jesus, I'm sending the Holy Spirit, and He's going to speak of me. So the Holy Spirit is speaking of Jesus Christ. It's like it shows the accountability. There's nobody out here, a long ranger. We all work together. And I think that's the system of accountability. It's like somebody that can hold you responsible. There's nobody loyal over you. It's somebody holding you responsible. And I think there should be some mutual interest there. Like, how can you hold me accountable if you don't even know nothing about? what I'm doing. Right, right. It's almost like me, you me, you know, you ask me some some law questions. I you can't I can't hold you accountable with law. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> right? Because I'm not on that, that level. We're not right. compatible. And so to, to put a button on it real quick, when we both believe in accountability, she has accountability people in her private circle when it comes to business, when it comes to being in school, she got people that can hold her accountable. Same game, my boy, my caring process or whatever. So it's natural because we believe in accountability that we want an accountability in this relationship. But trust and believe, we had a discussion about there was people in the running that who was gonna be our accountability people. Okay. Like it's like that was oh, a, yeah. a serious discussion. Right. And like and, and sometimes it's not really not really heated, but it was like I can tell you who I don't want to be our kind of good mm-hmm. government because right. I don't like their approach. Like, like we had talked about that. Mm-hmm. It was like, well, this couple maybe, but I don't know if I can see them the the, the long leg of our journey or whatever okay. like that. And so it was literally we had to pray about it. We had to have discussion about it. I had to say, listen, you can't approach me any type of way. They can't talk to me any type of way. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I can keep rock with them or not. And so when she brought up the couple, I was like, well, let's see. It's almost like. I had to interview him, like with therapists. Right. You should interview a therapist because every therapist ain't the for you. Yeah, so it was like, I don't know. We gonna see. And once we sat down, we had his name and talk with him. It was just like, yo, absolutely, mm-hmm. I like, absolutely. And it's good because they have, they challenged me. Like it was like all three of them in agreement. I know I'm a long ranger here. It's <laughs> like if if I believe in accountability in the system, then I gotta submit, which means to come up under whatever the three is agreeing on. This is what the group is agreeing on. And just because I have a different viewpoint, if I'm really going to submit and agree, then I got to leave my viewpoint and come up front and be like, all right, well, this is what we agree with. This is what we rocking with. So, okay. so yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's, I'm happy to know that it was a, a joint process. Absolutely. Because I would say when we, this, the whole accountability thing came up in the previous episode, that was, that became like a point of contention for right. those of us um, discussing that right. day of, well, you can't tell me and this person, but I appreciate that because mm-hmm. that's if, if it is something to like, okay, well, this is my accountability partner mm-hmm. and or my accountability person, and so they're not going to be over both of us. And mm-hmm. like to me, that's a recipe for disaster. Uh-huh. And I guess I equate it to my father is my sister calls him the bishop. I'm uh, I love I'm, it. I'm still working to accept that, but yeah. he, he is a minister, but he's also a counselor as mm-hmm. well. And so. Um, he and my mom, like they do marriage counseling, mm-hmm. and so one of the things that like with the, my previous relationship it was I believe in counseling I want us to because we were having some of those conversations so it's like I'd like for us to go to counseling together yeah. I'm not necessarily saying I want you to go to mine yeah. but I had I remember asking the question like what would you feel or how would you feel about doing that with my dad mm-hmm. because I'm aware that I know he can be objective but I'm also I know how that could look is that he's my dad mm-hmm. and so you feel as though someone's gonna be biased mm-hmm. and that was the conversation of like I mean, I think it'd be good, but I'm not sure that mm-hmm. I would want that to be the person mm-hmm. because that's still your dad. Mm-hmm. And, and so I'm like, okay, hey, that's fair. Right. And so I don't know that, for one, I will say, you all are mature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you all are yeah. adults. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is very it's clear to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so a lot of what you mm-hmm. all have shared mm-hmm. and I think what we're talking about, for one, I think the prerequisite <laughs> is Come on now. you got to grow up and mature and get to the point where yeah. I, I've been saying like, you gotta have a conversation with yourself. Absolutely. You gotta be able to tell yourself about yourself Absolutely. before you can, to me what I've learned is before you can even really be successful, I think in a relationship, whether it's a friendship or a romantic one, is you gotta be able to recognize your stuff Absolutely. and then also recognize so that you can then communicate that to mm-hmm. the other person because the conversations that you all are talking about, like you, you can't just be doing that, like not saying nothing right. or I'm yeah. like, um, 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 really like it. And, and because of. it's without that, mm-hmm. it's like a recipe for disaster. Yes. And so I guess it's a covert over. Yeah. Yes. No, but I'm because I'm just like, mm, y'all just, 
I want to be like, hey, you got, you too can have this. <laughs> uh, and you can. Like, you know, all things are. It's not a low price, though. Like, the right. emotions. Right. Right. No, low price, though. No, it's not a low price. It's no low, low price. Yeah, right. It's a real exactly. high, high it's price. There you go, absolutely. And it does not come already assembled. Come on, man. Not at all. But I guess just thinking about all of that and knowing that, you know, you all individually and collectively have done the work and have mm -hmm. done that. Um, and it's like, how can I get one? Or how can I get from like, and I guess that makes me think about QRC. So mm -hmm. it's just what, I guess if you all can share a little, like what it is, how it was, you know, birth and, and what some of the things you all are doing with or as QRC. I know, right? Right. So QRC is, it stands for um, a Quentin and Rosette Collaborative, right? Because right? we, we're working together, we're collaborating to provide what encouragement for Christian singles. Like that's All our right. subtitle, right? QRC, encouragement for Christian singles. And so the events, we call them single soirees, a single soiree where we have generally on Zoom right now, um, Zoom conversations about different topics. Mm -hmm. um, we've been having them since May, hosting them since May, um, every couple of weeks or maybe once a month. Um, and we talk about different topics, right? Yeah, so, right. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking, like, I'm looking yeah. at our description. I'm so like, she's going to hit it. Right. Right. No. Great job, girl. So cute. Girl. Quality discussion. Quality discussion. Quality discussion. Quality Quality discussion. Quality discussion. Relevant dialogue topics. on social media. Yeah. Dialogue yeah. and on social media. Relevant yeah. topics. Absolutely. New surveys. Yep. Do you uh, mad about surveys and stats? Surveys and stats. Yeah. Yeah. In collaborative what? events. Collaborative events. Oh, what that? Yep. Live and virtual. Mostly virtual now, like on Zoom. But yeah, so QRC, it's an acronym. It stands for Quentin and Rosette Collaborative, but we doubled those QRCs, quality, right, quality discussion, relevant topics, yeah. and yeah, and collaborative okay. events. So yeah, so we that's what we've been doing. Like, we know this season, first of all, singleness was already hard, right? Was it not already a challenge? Like, it was, and now you know, it's always, so, right. speaking of that, I, so I have done online dating. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had a relationship from someone I met online, and then the last one was somebody I met at a wedding. Mm -hmm. But recently, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give this another try. Right. Mm -hmm. And I noticed in the app, it actually has a question of so like current COVID 19 related dating. Yeah. Are you yeah. social distance, yeah. virtual, that's, or yeah. both? Like, so mm -hmm. that has been the right. test. Right, because it's you got to adapt. What are you comfortable with? Right. Like, well, only virtual, social mm -hmm. distance with a mask, mm -hmm. no oh. mask, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. Yeah. And it's ah. really been spurred out of COVID. Like, right. it's right at the beginning of COVID. Right. We, we didn't have anything to do because we would always go out. Right. And it was like, it's a bunch of people that are sitting around doing nothing. And and Rosette was like, we should start something the same. Yeah. And I'm like, Because huh? before, I mean, we're talking yeah. 10 years ago, before I was married and divorced or whatever, not in that order, but I was over a singles ministry at my previous church. And so I was, um, I was kind of inherited it from a woman who got married and so great <laughs> before that. And I'm like, I have a passion for singles. Not because I'm just so like, oh gosh, I'm single, like a single. I'm gonna, it's something for me to do in this season. So right. we, it was really good. It's called SMS. It's still on, um, mm -hmm. like the page is still on it's Facebook. Really I post on there, yeah. Mm -hmm. From time to time, it's called Singles Ministry Summit. And what it was, it was like, just like a summit, it was churches throughout the Baltimore area that would get together and, and do different events. Whether we went indoor rock climbing, okay. whether we did a Valentine's Day dinner for singles, whether we hosted a panel discussion of singles, some uh, married, some divorced, like telling their stories because at some point in their life they were single. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had different events like that. We did one of our huge, biggest events was a Christmas party, 200 plus people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking, if I can name some churches, you know the churches in Baltimore. You got CRL, you got New Psalmist, you got Empowerment, mm -hmm. you got the TAB. All these churches that came together and we just, we had a live band, we had dinner. It was beautiful. Like single people, we don't have to be all woe is me. Right. Just because you're in a season that you want, wish you were like, what was it? Yeah. Phaedra said, the only people that want to be married is the one that ain't. Like, yeah. I know that was kind of catchy, yeah. but it's so true. Like we are, now I'm not going to say we are, but many times too distracted or yeah. distressed about being single instead of asking God, like, what do you have for me in the season? Like, I'm going to, I'm willing vessel, I'm praying, I want to hear from you about what you would have me do. And that's how KRC was right. Like, okay, let's see how we can encourage some Christian singles. Yep. And we did uh, the first um, kind of discussions were like, what do, are you ready to date? What mm -hmm. does dating look like for you? Right. You mm -hmm. know, like, what would your friends, I heard we had some questions. We, we were coming from a yeah, yeah, Would yeah. your friend, would your best friend say you're ready to date? Right. Yeah. Would you they want to date? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Would you want to date yourself? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, like, let's right. just be 
Yeah, we were. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then we, you know, we've had topics. I remember love after loss, yeah. where we talked about whether lost a job, lost a spouse, lost somebody passed away, a child or your spouse. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, of course, that's not a topic people like necessarily want to dive into, but it's important. You're going to experience loss in some type of way, yeah. whether directly, well, definitely directly, because if you lived, you're going to die eventually. But yeah. you, you're supporting someone through loss. Too. So you might need to be equipped in helping them because it's more immediate and yours won't happen for a long time. We've had that. We've had beautifully, what was the last blended, one? beautifully and blessed. blended and blessed. That was a good one where we had interracial couples oh. or interracial adults yeah, tell their story single about okay. singles, about their story and their Being dating journey, and dating, yeah. mm -hmm. dating, all of that. Mm -hmm. And the next one, drum roll, is coming to Saturday from now, right? September nineteenth, eight p.m. We're going to be discussing Christ Across, Across Cultures. Cultures. And the oh. subtitle is mm -hmm. um, Sing Salvation, mm -hmm. Singleness, mm -hmm. and Sexism. Mm -hmm. Right? Whew. Yeah. That's a. I'm going to clutch these pearls. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot read yeah. these tales. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even with yeah. that. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We're going to have a panel of, you know, people. Just talking about all those yeah. topics, like the women in the church, like different church looks different across Christianity yes. and being saved oh. looks different across cultures, Absolutely. right? Like, I'm like, I wish you could do it at a time where in West Africa we can have some people on telling us what Christianity looks like right. there. You might right. be, if y'all know, let us know. Let's <laughs> know. Right. Like, let us know. Like, let us know. Like, email QRC, is it, is it right? <laughs> yeah. email QRC at gmail.com. All right, yeah, that's no, but it's just. That who yes. mm. it's important. Mm. It's important and even not just on the cross culture, like across town. Come on. <laughs> across town. They got a different culture across mm. town. Across mm. denomination Absolutely. of Christianity. Yes. yes. Come on. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So regionally, yes. On, yes. Who what is your Christian culture? Because I remember one previous episode you talked about that. It was like are you a cultural Christian? Yeah. And I was like, the you know definition I heard her say, and I'm like, well, that's really, I would say that's the opposite. I would say that's a religious Christian, mm -hmm. rather, oh, because I go every Sunday, I do mm -hmm. this. I would say if you are a culture, if you are taking on the culture of Christ, mm -hmm. you are, quote unquote, doing a good job. Like, if I'm right. showing love, if I'm, mm -hmm. you know, turning other cheek or forgiving, all of those things, then I'm a culture Christian. Not, mm -hmm. oh, because I'm tuned in, right now I'm tuning in every Sunday. Mm -hmm. or Ooh, tired of, I, that's just a confession. I'm tired of tuning in. Yes, yeah. that's, that's true. I just, yeah. Then there's opportunities. And back to what you were talking about with the online dating questionnaire. <laughs> you have to do what's comfortable for you. That's And this is just being on my soapbox. Because I, I believe love is worth the risk. You can minimize that risk. And don't yes. just be, you know, use wisdom and knowledge like the Bible tells us. But you can minimize that risk. So I would I would be comfortable socially distancing and dating, walking around oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Versus some people like, I just want to be online. Well, you might be asking them hard questions on Right. Uh, you can all up mm -hmm. in the camp. What, what, what is did she say? Like, one of the ones. Yeah, I twitch like, you like, like, Are you single? Is, any, is there anybody else Funny. who knows or thinks? Mm -hmm. Is there someone who thinks they're in a relationship? Right. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, are there children that you are unaware? Right. Is it a possibility? Yeah. But no. All of that. All of that. <laughs> Which all I was, that. my sister and I were having that conversation with my mom a few months ago. She was like, huh? Mm -hmm. What? I said, like, just be happy. Just, just be grateful. That's just be know. grateful. Like you've been, you've been out of this. Right, right. Well, they just celebrated thirty-eight years. So I'm just like, yeah. Woo. come on, congrats. Just graduated forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah. Fifty-one. Yeah. 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 Come I'm on. Just like, I'm just like, y'all. I know <laughs> it was not easy. It's not. That's right. another thing I would say. And then growing up and developing a relationship with Christ and the Holy Spirit for myself, yes. um, of just being able to see them as humans, my yeah. parents as humans, like, yeah. and not just that y'all my parents. Right. No. <laughs> You're a man, you're a woman, yeah. oh. you're a human, you deal with things. Um, but I, I am, I would say, I am excited about what you all are doing and that you, sorry, I thought, but you thought it not robbery. Come on, <laughs> come on, come on there. You thought it not come robbery on, to share your experiences yeah, with the rest yeah, of us. Yeah. I love it. Um, it but yeah, so QRC, so you've already started doing events, you are continuing, so I imagine, my. Well, I'm, this might just be me hopeful thinking when we are safely able to assemble oh in the masses again or even just 50 um i guess is that you are looking to kind of take some of those things that you've been doing virtually you know to doing some in-person events Absolutely. like we've um we were already we've been brainstorming in the lab as they say and so in the studio right we're like how people how comfortable are people yeah. going horseback riding right now because there are things or right or like it's about to be pumpkin season, right. season, right? So like you know, doing that, she's shaking. She's like, I got pumpkin spice. Yeah, I'm I'm like, I'm I'm like, I'm I'm like, 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 I
sunflower seal. You need to get that. Where's the sunflower seal? Seal that's yeah, still right that here. That was. Um, I'll give you the address. That was. <laughs> right. It was so random, but really right. nice. Like, cause I'm like, we really right. just drove out right, here, right. standing in sunflower. So right. Give us some flowers. Skydiving was great. Now I was gonna say I'll do that again. Yeah, right. Okay, right. I want to do skydiving. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Okay, I'll consider it. It's. I will say. It was kind of like, ooh, but there was a lot of comfort in knowing that person yeah, attached right, to right, me. Because right, right. it's like, I didn't, yeah. I technically did not jump into yeah. the plane. Yeah. I kind of was like, <laughs> <pushed it. laughs> but it was, it was truly a well, great experience. There, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, so that, but no, I, I think one of the things I would say in terms of looking at the silver lining mm -hmm. of this year is a return to doing outdoor activities. Absolutely. And so, I know a lot of the people that I know are comfortable mm -hmm. doing things outside. So mm -hmm. I think if you all start doing some of Absolutely. that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. Yeah, we're here I for will it. walk in the pumpkin. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Just good. Like, good. Like, good. Okay. Okay. Spice a lot good. Good. So, so yeah, so yeah, we'll, we've been thinking about it. Because I'm like, certain people, it's up to your level of comfort. And we wouldn't, we're not having a whole 200 people conference or retreat yeah. right now. Right. Right. Yeah. We've thought about those a long time once right. we're all clear. But for now, like, you know, it's like riding on pumpkin, actually getting together, just keeping people. You know, not busy, busy work, but just being intentional about mm -hmm. spending time and getting there. Love takes hold if they're a quality time or type person, if they can. Right. And I think even, you know, you mentioned earlier about Ecclesiastes, like Ecclesiastes of not meant to be alone. I mm -hmm. think that's not just about Absolutely. a romance. Oh, so that, for me, is, I am an introvert and I'm good with being in the house, mm -hmm. but I realize, okay, I'm not as much of a homebody as I, I like to tell myself right. that right. I am. Right. Right. Um, but, and I'm not even the biggest hugger, yeah. but right. I remember having a conversation, I guess that was May or June of like, I actually miss hugs. <laughs> and I never thought those words would come out of my mouth. But I'm like, right. I'm just really like, I want to be able to hug right. someone mm -hmm. and not, you know, not have to feel involved. And even like uh, recently, uh, my uncle passed away and mm -hmm. went down for the funeral. But even that of being around family, but not really being able to be oh, around yeah, them, yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah. like with my parents and my sister, I, I, I hugged yeah. them, but everybody else, it was. Yeah, hey, how you doing? And it's just like we're not strangers, exactly. it's just, but it's just that is a part of our reality now. Mm -hmm. So, and she briefly talks about that when I gratitude uh, <laughs> podcast gratefulness. <laughs> you want to check out? Yes, great episode. Yes, yes, yes. Because, yes. 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 I love it. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no. So I'm, I'm yeah. excited about that. I'm yeah. looking. I'm looking forward to. So you said September 19th. Yes, that's the next um, one. This single soiree. Yes, yes. So single soiree. I will be sure to post about that on on the page as well and links to their their social media. But. Is there anything else in that this experience that you all, like your experience mm -hmm. of dating, mm -hmm. um, that you all have? I guess just one of the one thing you would say that you've learned or that you would share with those of us who are still single and mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the one thing I might share, but it's a couple of things that's pressed upon me to talk about. And one um, conversation, like really talking like that's one thing qrc what i love about qrc is that we're really pushing people to talk and even talk about hard conversations hard topics and that's something that we do we always have hard conversations so one thing dating was that that's matured me is having these hard conversations and not not getting offended by them not getting upset about it but just having the conversation so that's one thing two one thing I'm gonna definitely talk about. It's okay, I'm teasing. I just say this real quick. I'm teasing. And I don't even know if this is amazing. I got two too. I don't even know if I'm answering the question or not. But it is one thing that's told me in this dating is just how powerful you are being single. Like <laughs> Jesus being a single man, Paul being a single man, people have affected the body of Christ being single in a tremendous way. Mm -hmm. And Mike Todd talks about it, like. Being being single, that's this is the time for you to realize who you are, how powerful you are as a person, and to not compromise who you are as a person. Like being, you're, you don't need to be in a relationship to be a whole person. Being in a relationship doesn't make you a whole person. You can be a whole person being single and make great contributions to the church and to the world. So I think in this singleness is, is amazing. In this singleness, I've really learned how to be me, speak up for me, as much as I like Rosette, as much as I love Rosette, I gotta make sure I know who I am and I can't compromise that. And that 
forces us to bump heads, but it's like, okay, and we will make a relationship, how are we gonna merge that? How are we gonna go from going this to like, without without giving up who you are or whatever? So I think in this, when it comes to the whole the dating thing, is embracing my singleness and bringing a whole person to the dating scene and say, can you rock with this person? And being, you know, empathizing, having conversations, know where my non-negotiables are, but also where I can compromise and not always, um, what's the other word for it? So the compromise. Um, Collaborate? Give in? Uh, it's, it's like something. I, I was trying to be slick. <laughs> I was trying to be slick. <laughs> right but, but it ain't work. Yeah. Compromise versus um, accommodate. Oh, okay. Compromise. Yeah, yeah. 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 When you accommodate somebody, you just yes. give in, like, okay, I'm just going to do what you want. But a compromise when both persons kind of walk away, not always, not fully getting what they wanted, but feeling like, okay, we had a big compromise. And so, and my, my singleness, I understand that there are some things I'm not going to accommodate you with, but there are some things I'm going to compromise with you with. I don't know. That was amazing. That was a great answer. Like, I'm like, you know. So thank y'all for tuning in tonight. Like, like, <laughs> Off her plate. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, no. This is my commentary and yours. Of course, my, my one right. point. <laughs> no, I just think that was so important. Babe. You said it so eloquently. Um, in terms of just getting, you're like, oh, y'all so cute. What's his, what is, uh, words of affirmation is his oh, name? Like, but one. that was so good. <laughs> I feel love my name. Turn off the camera. Right. Boundaries, I'm sorry. Boundaries. I apologize. But no, that was so good because it was, it was all of that. Like, you bring in one person, mm -hmm. and then one, if I had to put it in one sentence and summarize what you're saying, don't despise your singleness. Ooh. Don't, you know, don't despise oh, yeah. it. Be, be, embrace it and do mm -hmm. what you need to do with it. And so it's it's so so important, and also the clear is kind, unclear is unkind. Just be a whole person, and and don't be afraid to have the hard conversations. That was my commentary on yours. My point. <laughs> cuticle counselor, cuticle counselor, yeah. cuticle counselor, yeah. the cuticle counselor. Oh gosh, <laughs> too much. But I, my, if I would have to say, just from having been and still being a single person for most of my adult life, or whatever, whole life, because I didn't have a boyfriend when I was a baby, right? right? <laughs> I would have to put, I have to put that scripture on it. And it's not lip service, it's not just say it, it's apply it. Because we know the Bible is about practical application to your life. I would have to stay, say with people who know me, if they're watching, they know my favorite verse, Philippians 4, 6, and I add 7, exactly, I add 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in Everything yeah. that's your word that's up with by you. prayer, right. right. by right. prayer and supplication, by yeah. praying, make with thanksgiving. So you're yeah. thanking God for it. Let your request be made known yeah. to God, and the peace yeah. that surpasses yeah. all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And that's just yeah. you don't just say that's me. That means yeah. putting it out there. God already knows about it, but it's a level of vulnerability you're yes. practicing with Him first. Because yes. it's, it's going to be easier yeah. to be vulnerable with other people. Absolutely. Hear what you reveal when you've already been vulnerable with God. Yeah. Like, Lord, you know this is you know this is hard. Help me to get the lesson in this situation mm -hmm. because I'm, I want to. I desire to be married. I desire mm -hmm. to you know have the family and certain things that you know maybe in a queue or whatever or in cash. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean that queue like you, right? Like but in, <laughs> I know you do, right? Because you're you <laughs> in, in the cash. He's like, keep I'm it saying, cash. Keep it right. Cash, as you were saying, okay? Yeah. Cash. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so just really apply that scripture. Like, look at it, dissect it, see what you need to do to apply it to your life. I think it will really, it can do a lot of healing and things for you. I, I yeah. love it. I love both of them. Like, mm -hmm. commented my comments <laughs> what you feel um, about, darn it, it just went away. Mm -hmm. But the, the scripture, just the, like I said, that's one of the things that I have been working on of, you said power in being singleness. Mm -hmm. Power in yes, being single and despite yes. not... Literally last night when I was trying to set up, I was like, despise not your humble beginning. Okay. <laughs> just remind me, but just so um, about that. that I would say that I've learned or am learning about myself of the converse, that's what it is, of being able to have that conversation and being vulnerable even with God, of mm -hmm. saying it out loud. Right. Because a lot of things, I'm very much, I'm in my head. And yeah. so people who know me know that I, I will have a whole situation, conversation played out in my mind before anything has ever been said. <laughs> And then be like, didn't we talk about that? That's me. That is me. Oh, but that didn't happen. Well, that's why I even say now. I'm like, keep on confess right yeah. now. So, so, you know, getting out of that, and that's one of the things I would say, and it's specifically in this um, season of COVID, of just talking out loud, like mm -hmm. actually talking to God. I'm like, okay, look, mm -hmm. you said you're going to give me the desires of my heart. Yes. I think this is what I thought my desires were. Mm -hmm. Clearly, no. This is, but just doing that more of that. Right. And I think. 
I guess that would I would echo what you all shared in just of really taking the time to get to know yourself mm -hmm. and building that relationship of who you are because I, I've heard often of people in relationships or even in movies and shows of like I lost myself in the mm -hmm. relationship yes. and mm -hmm. I gave so much of, of myself to you and if you watch um this is us that yeah. was like what they with Randall and Ben yeah. that was the thing of like mm -hmm. I keep putting my what I down mm -hmm. trying to be supportive of yeah. you and I know just based on my personality mm -hmm. and friendships and in relationships I've been in I often is like okay. Yeah. I am going. I'm a giver. Yes. So I am going to give. I'm going to accommodate. Yeah. I accommodated to the point of where it built, developed resentment. Yeah. Um, and so those are all great things that if you all are not already following, you need to follow QRC and yeah. attend the events. Yeah. Um, so September 19th is mm -hmm. the next one. Yeah. Like I said I will be sure to post about that. Um, before we go, I think I share with you all. Like I like to share more random yes. thoughts. Um, today has <laughs> been so random. Right. Um, Can I say something before you get yes, into it? Yes, go ahead. I'm I'm sorry because I know that's how you're gonna close the show. I just want to tell you. I don't know where you want to take this podcast, but I want to let you know. This podcast is incredible, and you're incredible. You are an incredible host. Like, not, not like, like no, this. this is the great yeah. symbol yeah. in school. He knows it already. Like, so just in case you don't know, I'm just, I, I tell you, this is what I do. I listen to podcasts. I, this is what I do, and you are incredible. In your bag. Like you, that, yes. that, <laughs> your bag. In your and some people will say bag. bag. The questions that the questions that you ask, you're patient and let the person that your guest get their whole thought out. And then you'll come back like you are exceptional. So mm -hmm. I just want to say, I don't know where you want to take this podcast, like but this, like, this is a gold mine. So I just want to say that to you. So I hopefully agree. you can come and get random. That was I, my random thought. You got your shout out. No, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and that's, I would say that is, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just to back, sorry, man, not trying to show more for, for you, but I just, that just highlights what I wanted to say is, get serious about God's business. He's going to get serious Ooh. about yours. Come so on. you doing your thing. Come God on. give this to you. You are come doing on. Well with yeah, you know. make me cry. Because <laughs> I might. But no, um, I, I appreciate that. And now I would say, even this, the podcast has been a okay. Mm. Let me just do it. Yes. Mm. We'll see what happens and keep going because mm. there have definitely been some days I'm just like, eh, <laughs> I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. But just keep going yeah. but because i am not trying to get extra emotional <laughs> um, as i said today has been yes. random i um i want to thank you all again for being here and just to, before we go my random thought um for the week that i actually i literally had this morning and prepping um and kind of going in line with what we've talked about today but just like what if online dating never got invented? Wow. Like what if what if it Whoa. what if it didn't get created? Oh, wow. And I don't remember when, you know, when it started and I know people would use Black Planet on them like to oh, try to hook up, you know, right. back before yeah. social media like, with social media. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah I, I remember. I, I always did, but my like space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, MySpace Black Planet, but like what if it just it never was created? Mm -hmm. And and I guess the step further of what if arranged marriages was still a thing? Ooh, but it is though. In it countries, it right? is it is mm -hmm. in certain countries and even cultures right, here right. in America. But yeah. just I've recently started watching Married at First Sight. Yeah. And That's but true. it's like in a in a in a sense that is a version of Absolutely. an arranged marriage. Right. But mm -hmm. it's just like what if we never whoever I'm grateful for yeah. it because I don't like going out all the time. Mm -hmm. But like what if we never had online dating? Mm -hmm. And then we had quarantine. <laughs> what have been a lot? Oh, you know, that have been a lot. Like, what if there just was no? Oh. Like, it just got established. Like, like, oh, like yeah, like so. Yeah, what if before sure. you know, prior Whoa. to this, because a lot of things have been created. Like, you, yeah. you guys started right. things yeah. versus battles yeah. got created. Yeah. 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 Zoom yeah. is making buku money yeah. now. Yeah. Carrot bacon. It probably was around before that. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. bacon yeah. 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 I made some of her untu 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 and I don't know if it's you could have social media and not have online dating because mm -hmm. I feel like the tech, whatever, it kind of mm -hmm. go hand in hand. But mm -hmm. it was just like, what if we never had it mm -hmm. and then quarantine hit and then somebody created it yeah. because, yeah. 
you know, like it was a response, right? Mm -hmm. Or was it an anticipation? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that was just like I said, my random thought was like, what if we never had online dating and we really did still have to go out and have conversations mm -hmm. with people? Wow. And what if pickup lines were still? Oh God! Wow. Your legs are tired. Running through my mind. Wow. Yikes! <laughs> On my personal favorite girl, that must be jelly, you guys. Damn, don't shake like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. That's for time. I'm like that's for time. But I have. But it's just like I've noticed there are like online versions of pickup lines. Mm -hmm. But it's just like just curious. Yeah, that's like, cool it's it's like I said, swiping has become a pastime. Yeah, but um, yeah. but it's funny just in people's little bios of like the things that you you got to come up with a witty way to and in mm -hmm. essence to sell yourself mm -hmm. um, to get mm -hmm. someone to because it's either one they're just looking at the pictures or something that you wrote in a profile yeah. and so like. The elevator speech that you used to do for right. work. Come on, now. You're not doing dating. for dating. <laughs> and it's right. just like, so it's a, I'm sure dating was always some level of work, mm -hmm. but dating now legit feels like another job, especially mm -hmm. if you're, in my experience, we're doing online dating. Because mm -hmm. I don't do well with talking about myself. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. like, you want me to, can I just put these pictures up? Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Can we just these paragraphs? Matter of fact, can I just give you my number and we yeah. just talk? We will have a conversation, see if it works. No, mm -hmm. okay, keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But but like I said, that, that's my random thought. Um, I guess if you all have any others or any thoughts you'd like to share, please do so. But I'm, I'm just glad that it that it was. I'm glad that it was. I know some serious Christian power couples that met online. Oh yes, that are yeah. doing the change for the well, kingdom. That's on, right. That's that's on the oh, that's right. Right. right, and they are mm -hmm. doing some changes for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They are building the kingdom of God, and I'm like, I'm glad they met. Mm -hmm. Maybe well, you know, it wasn't, you know, right. I'm just saying like, some things, but and, and to an extent, I feel like online dating is a watered down version mm -hmm. of arranged marriage yeah, or of right. Right. right because you mm -hmm. especially for some of them and i've been on several like some ask a whole lot of questions mm -hmm. some don't but it's like a lot of them you're putting in a certain level of criteria that i imagine you would have given a matchmaker or the mm -hmm. people who were deranging so there is a level of that and then it's like okay i'm going to show you people who you could potentially mm -hmm. match right, with right. and then leave you to do the rest so mm -hmm. it's like i'm grateful for it um, but just it's like, hmm, yeah. what would life be like yeah, if it wasn't? Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, yeah, somebody be getting real rich right now because somebody really created yeah, it. Yeah, right. right. This, this yeah. pandemic. Yeah. I wish I knew how to do all those yeah. things. Yeah. But I'm grateful for technology. Yes. But yes, I, I want to thank you all again. Um, I've enjoyed this conversation and learning more about how you all met and I love how it happened. Y'all just all smiling and giggling. Um, but yeah, so if you all could, we've shared if it's QRC Collective or I'm collaborative. Like, collaborative. So, I don't keep wanting to add right. collective so, or QRC. On Instagram, it's at QRC dot a single soiree. Okay. But you can find it. Just put it QRC. QRC single soiree. Don't worry, I'm going to Every time I'm going to write. S-O-I-R-E-E, I believe. S-O-I-R-E-E. And the same one is on Facebook. If you put in the ad, QRC. A single, a Quentin and Rosette collaborative. But the ad is, you can also add it. Can you see that? Okay. So on Instagram, it's QRC, a single soiree. Facebook is QRC a Quentin and Rose Quentin and Rose collaborative. Co collaborative and then individually you all mm -hmm. on social media if you want them to yes. find them. Yeah, so I'm do you plan the, the, yes. the cuticle counselor. Yes, yes. That's, that's, I'm, I'm also Come excited here. about yes. this. Yes. Yes. At the cuticle counselor yes, that's on what Instagram. Yes. A separate one up. later because oh. I'm, yeah, that's. Oh, yes. Just right. follow if yes. you're not already following. The cuticle like, counselor. Yep. Great suggestions and tips for yourself yes. for you and your children yes. especially in this world of virtual distance learning yes. teacher mom oh gosh yes, yes. um and q did you yeah no, i gotta look my stuff up okay hey, i understand no so yeah quentin admins on facebook i'm gonna say facebook.com <laughs> but on facebook and i'm actually looking at my ig uh quentin i'm sorry admins.quentin yeah 
Amen. on IG. And you, start, you can see all my five posted pictures. I'm telling you, it's just, it's going to be amazing, amazing. Yeah. Like, so, Edmund, that Quinston right, on well, IG. I will, I will be sure to include all of your <laughs> handles you, you. Um, in the show notes, and, um, and I'll tag them in the post about it. But like I said, if you're not already following them, please do so. A lot of great things. I'm looking forward to September 19th. Yeah. Um, about this across cultures, Christ across cultures. Yes. Who? Yes. Yeah. That's gonna be interesting. Um, and if you are not already following the podcast on Instagram, it's podcast. It's all good. Facebook, it's all good. The YouTube channel is it's all good. Um, and if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, I ask that you would rate the podcast because yeah. that helps in terms of viewers. If you're listening through Spotify or uh, the Google available on all the streaming platforms, but please be sure to follow, rate, subscribe. You can contribute to support this podcast and in its endeavors if you'd like. Um, also, there is merchandise available. Links to all of that is on the page. But it's all bueno. Can I give me a uh -huh. bueno? Yeah. Okay. Come on. I'm gonna have. I don't have this bueno. Yeah, but I'm sweating yeah. now. But yes, I need to. So yeah, this new idea. Okay. Come right on. now, they're all just saying it's all good. But we okay. need to get some. It's all bueno. But um, that stuff is available. Um, so many great things have been shared today, but I think some of the takeaways that are coming to mind is just one is take the time to get to know yourself yes. and do the work and develop a relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Don't be trying to just do one or the other. Um, you need all of them. That Trinity checks and balances, you know, the way our government is supposed to work. Come on. But Come thankfully, on. They, the Trinity does work that mm -hmm. way. So take the time to learn yourself, have those difficult conversations with yourself and with God. If, if, if talking out loud is a, is a challenge, start by writing. Like for me, that was one of the things I did, journaling, writing it out. Because sometimes it's easier to write what you're feeling as opposed to saying it. And then also figuring out what your boundaries are. <laughs> what, do you, what you need to do is your boundaries for yourself, setting them and sticking to them, but giving yourself grace. And then when you are fortunate or blessed enough to meet someone mm -hmm. and develop the relationship, make sure that you are willing to have those difficult conversations up front. Um, Cause I think it's, you know the same, I think back, I played sports. So think back to when it's like preseason, you're training, yeah, you're doing all right. this stuff, yeah. all the running and the, mm, Coach, I still can't stand you for mountains that you set up to run. But you do all of that stuff up front yeah. and you know you develop, you build the foundation so that way when things come, it's there and you build what your default is going to be. Um so just take the time to do all of those things. And as today was another example of life happens and everything does not always look or feel good, but know that in the end it is all going to be good. Um and so Thank you all for being here and joining me, being flexible. Yes, and thank yes. you all for listening. So until next time.